Welcome to another exciting edition of The Raven's Flock. Woo! It is Saturday, May 14th. We have survived Friday the 13th, much to the dismay of any powers that might bestow bad luck upon us. Yeah, fun <laughs> fact. The Friday the 13th used to be a holy day where you could celebrate fornication under the uh, under the goddess Freya. Whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. So we could celebrate getting fucked? Yes, and fucking. Why wasn't I there told about goes, this? There goes any monetization. Holy shit. Angel, you hearing this? Apparently Friday the 13th is supposed to be a celebration of fucking. So, ergo, here we are. Oh, please. That's what the churches always say. No, the Hang church on. says, believe in me or I'll kill you. Actually, that's true. That is also true. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, one and all, to this episode of The Raven's Flock. I am your host, Jose Casabona, and founder of this illustrious, magnificent masterpiece of a channel that is The Raven's Flock. And joining me on my right is... My, the host of the Black Files, my tag partner for Wrestle Rewind, the man who will put in the man, who puts in the man hours on all of the videos that we produce on this channel every single week, the man who's gonna have one hell of a time next week when we go to O Town, Mr. Juan Arouse. I dream a girl about a girl who the mix of Destiny's Child with just a little touch of Madonna's wild style with Janet Jackson smile, uh, throw okay. in a body like Jennifer, and you got the star of my liquid dream. You know, sooner or later, you're the one who mentioned O Town. You brought this on yourself. You did this. Number one, just, it was supposed to be a reference to Orlando. Number two, nobody fucking remembers a boy band except you. And number three, no, I'm surprised at this point we haven't come out with a freaking separate show on the channel, which is Juan's Karaoke. <laughs> I thought that already <laughs> happened. That was called The Black Files. Don't tell ah! ah! And of course, and of course talking shit from the other side of, this ta of, of the town here is the host of Los Amigos Play, a man with one million opinions and zero apologies to get offer to give. Oh well, also f that fucks too, Mister Angel Mendez. Hello, everyone. Unfortunately, as you can see, I am not there in person, but nonetheless, I am there in spirit. And we've it's because I died. I'm actually dead. My soul is talking to you right now. It's true. Do you have any ex idea how uh, expensive an ectographic link to the ethereal planes Don't is? Don't remind me. I have a budget sheet in my room, and I have yeah. to fucking adjust. and you haven't <laughs> paid me for any of this, you hobo. All right. Well, see, it all began when Konami decided to reban Monster Reborn. <laughs> oh, God. The Thank story you. just ends here. And of course, folks, much like all of our shows on this channel, we are simulcasting on youtube.com slash the Ravens Flock and twitch.tv slash the Ravens Flock online. Hit the subscribe or the follow button on the bottom right corner of your screen underneath the X. Which is here to celebrate our 10th anniversary as a team here. And yes, I'm going to plug it right now. We have a new shirt. We have a new uh, merchandise uh, that's up right now on our Teespring store on teespring.com slash stores slash the dash Raven dash flock. We have a new shirt that's up right now and it's a great, awesome de uh, decal on the shirt. 10 years in the making, and it's literally the number 10 on the shirt established 2013 because that is the year we started. And yes, Juan, I'm gonna please go, go right ahead and share the link in the comments in the, in the chat box below. What do you think I'm trying to do? Absolutely, go right ahead. And it's not just t-shirts. We also have other lines of merchandise that's available. We have long sleeves. We have hoodies. We have tank tops. We have yoga pants. We also have accessories ranging from phone cases to keychains to tote bags and, uh, and coffee mugs. We have so much stuff on our store at prices that you won't bitch about. Considering it's that we live in capitalism. Considering how low I ha keep our overhead on here, I'm surprised we get any people to purchase. Absolutely, and more to the point, yes, and hit the notification bell uh, to stay up to date on all of our media content. As I mentioned earlier, we produce content every single week, and leave your questions and comments down below, and we will answer them during the duration that we are live. Speaking of whom, we've already got Will Moore's the hardest working mod in all of YouTube. Hello, Will. Hello, Will. Thank we you, have, Will. Uh, the legend of the traveling TARDIS watching tonight. Hello there. How How's it going, Much folks? Much appreciated. Well, 
Yeah, no, they're another podcast here. Oh, Will Morris already went ahead and shared the link for uh, for the Teespring store. Uh, Thank you, Will. Thanks a lot, like Will. Said, thanks for being a team player. Well, he like I said, he's the hardest working mod in all of YouTube. He's over here helping us get the hook up. There uh, looks like uh, Traveling Tardis and Will were having some fun banter about our headline story. Uh, before we get into that, I want to go ahead and offer a sincere apology. Our special guest, Lollygag, who is a dear friend of the Ravens flock, who was slated to uh, make an appearance today sadly will not be joining us she's under the weather uh we wish her a speedy recovery Andy. and we hope that she has uh that she has herself uh a good time tonight hopefully she's watching Lo uh, lollygag laurie we love you very much absolutely and we'll see binks, you at the next con being sick sucks it sucks uh thankfully um, we, uh, it looks like they're already here to, uh, have some fun with our headline story. And let's not waste time. Let, let's not. Let, yeah, they're already, they're already <laughs> talking about it. We might as well get started right now. Yep. And, uh, lo and behold, yep. The, the headline for this is, uh, one of the big, uh, entertainment news, uh, stories to come out this week is that BBC has announced the a brand new actor who's going to be coming in after Jodie Whittaker steps down as the 13th doctor to become the 14th incarnation of the renegade Time Lord himself, the Doctor, in the cult classic series Doctor Who. Yeah! Can we really call it cult classic yeah, if it's no, one of the most well-known and beloved shows? It is a cultural TV. phenomenon. You're what writing. It started there as a go. cult classic, evolved into a cultural phenomenon. A phenomenon. Yes, as all of you know, recently, the most recent uh, season of the Doctor Who has sadly been plagued by a slew of really, really messed up writing decisions that made the enthusiasm for the show go to an all time low, which what? is kind of a shame because I thought that Jodie was kind of a good actress. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. a terrific actress. Oh, dude. Unfortunately, the actors can only work with the script that they are given. And yeah, let's just say that script is some work. Which is, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I thought I remember hearing Russell T. Davies is picking back up as the uh, new showrunner uh, mm. moving forward. Um, Legendary Traveling Tardis could probably correct me on that. But lo and behold, uh, getting straight to it, uh, the, the brand new actor who's going to be playing Doctor Who is a gentleman by the name of Suchi Gatwa. All right. And yeah, and that's how it's pronounced. I had the worst time trying to find out. Same. But you know what? <laughs> Uh, uh, but I'm you know what? At, I'm not good at pronouncing certain names, so which is it's perfectly okay because you know it's not it's not easy to uh, to get through that. Um, however, uh, it looks as if uh, Suchi Gatwa, who, if I'm seeing this correctly, damn, he's younger than we are. He's only 29 years old. He turns 30. For and real? Yes, Russell T Davies is back. Yes, and that's apparently he is a random Scottish actor who rose to prominence as Eric Effion in a Netflix comedy drama Sex Education from 2019 to the present, which got him the BAFTA Scotland Award for the Best Actor on TV and three BAFTA TV Award nominations for the Best Male Comedy Performance. So he is no newbie at this. He has some experience with the spotlight. Nice, Indeed, nice. And yeah. that's good. He's got some acting chops and that's uh, always good to have. And uh I look forward to seeing like what he does. Like, here's the thing: when news broke out, he's that gonna be in Barbie. Well, like the, the <laughs> what's really cool is that obviously being uh, announced as the newest inductee in the fraternity of the Doctors, uh, who's uh, been uh, who's been joined by uh, uh, by actors such as Peter Capaldi, uh, Matt Red Smith, Matt Smith, David Tennant, Christopher Eccleston, John McCann, Sylvester McCoy. Um, let's see. Uh, shoot. For a brief time, even if it Tom was just Baker. for yeah, for a brief time, even if it was just for that special, uh, freaking John Hurt as the War yes, Doctor. Yes, John Hurt, the War Doctor, and the aforementioned Jody Whittaker. My brain had a thing. I was on such a roll too. I was going backward with all the <laughs> doctors who were uh, there uh, in in the in the going all the way back to the very first. Hello, Mike. Mike, thank you very much for joining Mike, us. Mike, Mike, hello there. Hey, Mike. Welcome. He's so cool that his name is said twice. Yep. Mike, Mike. Hey, Mike. Angel, Damn. can you have a name? Can you change your name and have your name changed to Angel, Angel? Or Jose, Jose? No, your first name but is I could change it to Joe, Joe. Bon oh, bastard! For real, though. Dun, 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 it would seem that this is going to be the first serious dramatic role that he's ever taken where he will be the main character. The biggest role that he did was that comedy series, which, hey, if he got in those awards, that means there has to be something good for it. Yep. Speaking and of JoJo, though, I am willing to give this guy a show just because he has the balls to rock out the Giorno Giovanna chestplate look. 
Oh, oh, I know yeah. what you're talking about. That yeah, is really no, cool. Like, one of the one of the cool uh, like uh, photo ops that he's got of him has got him in this uh, really neat uh, like open ch- uh, open chested shirt on, and the shirt itself is also sort of opened out like that. Sort of reminds like, okay, did 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 Lil Nas X like, hey man, I, I don't need this anymore. You want it? I think it's your size. Cool. Thanks you very much, man. Just go ahead and, uh, and pass them to him. Yeah. No, well, uh, well, like I, I mean that in like the cool ways. Like that's the kind of style he's got, and I dig that. And you're right. He does. Uh, if he can rock the open chest out, not many of us guys can. But maybe we should try. Maybe that's a fashion statement that I would like to see more of. And he's already got, uh, like, uh, like he's already got like the his uh fellow Scottish doctor Sylvester McCoy, who was the seventh, and Peter Capaldi, who's the twelfth, already gave their thumbs up. Like, oh, okay, dude, from one Scott to another. Welcome to the club. Yeah. So they're like showing some love here. And Peter Capaldi specifically is like, this is the best sort of story because his family came from, uh, moved from Rwanda during the height of like the the travesties that were going down there. And he uh, and he moved to, uh, to Scotland as a kid and he grew up uh, just like being a regular kid, just trying to live his life. And now he's the doctor. And that's just like. Mm, that's the American dream, I guess, in the UK. Uh, so nice, it's still nice. the American dream. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Of course, of course. <laughs> Every dream Absolutely. belongs to America. <laughs> <laughs> We're being so weirdly. Hello, Nikki Bella. Thank you very much for joining us. Yep. And we also got Hello. some comments from Legend and Will Morris. Yeah, uh, let me see here. Will Morris and, Le- and Legend of the Traveling Tardis series. Uh, come on, we knew that um, Chris Chibnall was going to be bad after his torch root or, or his torchwood episode was brutal, and Legend of the Traveling Tardis is like, yeah, Chris Chibnall is a drama. I'm a showrunner, not much of a sci-fi runner. He did okay on the uh, show Broadchurch, but that's it. Turns so, out that just because you're a good director doesn't mean you can direct everything good. Exactly. Like, so, like folks, much. like, okay, let me put it this way. The director of Tron Legacy, he's not the best person director, but he came from a architectural design uh, like uh, background in his studies, so that's why the visuals in Tron Legacy were just... Wow, I get what you're saying. So sometimes His acting was the like, directing wasn't. I but, I get what you're saying, and I think I can interpret it the best. A director can be good in their craft, but if you put them and direct them to a movie that's outside of their element, then that's uh that's basically a coin toss. Yeah, it's good, it's good enough. To draw an example, uh, Ang Lee who directed Crouching yeah. Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and he, then he gave I was us thinking about Ang that Hulk. exactly, and then he gave us Hulk. Hulk. The Eric Bana super green oh. scene. Oh. Son of a bitch. God, that movie was dull. I got to see <sighs> Jennifer Connelly out of it, so, you know. Yeah, but yeah, Jennifer well, Connelly got the same facial expression every time. Yeah, but I That's got That's because he wasn't told to act. They just took pictures of her and photoshopped them onto a model. <laughs> well, it's 2003. Was Photoshop a thing then? All right. Considering um, the effects that I saw in that uh, movie, yes. Also, yeah. uh, also, Angel, Will Morris over here was saying, uh, sex education is more a dramedy, uh, and Suchi, and Suchi Gatwa has serious dramatic chops as well as breeding and comedic timing. Okay, so hey, it's more perfect. dramedy than comedy than anything. Okay, that's and, cool. Well, he's got um, the chops. He can do it. So what? What about the general public? Like, have there has it uh, like has there been any uh, you know any opinions or any reactions from any of the fans? Oh, have there been reactions? Oh, God. Oh, okay. boy. Now, tell me you're a racist without telling me you're a racist. When you have people literally on Twitter going like, is it wrong for me to believe that Doctor Who is intrinsically and inherently an Anglo character? Hang on a minute. This sounds familiar. Stop me if you hear this one. Uh, BBC announces new Doctor. Doctor is not white and light skinned. Doctor is not uh, a do- doctor is not uh, a do- uh, yeah no. Doctor is not light skinned. Doctor is not a man. Actually, no, that was the reaction ah, to the thirteenth doctor. The worst thing ever. Yeah, we've seen this before. Unfortunately, as it is suspected in many brands of social media, a bunch of dumbasses will be screaming and crying at the, at the thing that it seems not the same thing that was the same thinking. Um, now, immediately, when thing became the new thing, it wasn't as good as the old thing. But that doesn't mean that this new thing will be as bad as the newer, older thing. But some people just understand it because they don't get these things. They don't get it. Some folks want They're to afraid look. of change. This thing is a thing that's not the same as my thing. That makes it automatically bad. We think change is bad. No, don't change no. anything for me. How dare Once they? Once again, um, people are forgetting. 
the skill of the actor is only as good as the script they are given. Jodie Whittaker didn't do anything wrong. She just had the misfortune on being in a series that decided to shit on its own lore so hard that it nearly brought the entire fucking channel down. By the way, yeah, the, the loss of viewership for the recent uh, Doctor Who uh, season was so heavy, it actually put the channel at risk. Jeez, Ouch. man, what the fuck? These yeah, fans, man. Yeah, no, no, yeah, thank, yeah, please, Russell T. Davies, help. Oh Get your God. shit together. Um, Nick so, yeah, was as usual. was trying to share some news of what was going on earlier today. There was, unfortunately, a mass shooting that happened in Buffalo, New York, where eight people died, and that was fucked up. Oh, that damn. Take it down, though, because it's pretty messed up, but, yeah. yeah. No. I know you're trying to help out, Nikki Bella. We um, appreciate it, but, oh, man. And, uh, let me see here. Our sincerest condolences to those. That is... Uh, really over here, not uh, like not everyone can, uh, not everyone can uh, make Marvel movies. I rest my case. Okay, that was legend. <laughs> that is true. Artists. And let me see here. Uh, they shouldn't. They need to take it away from them. The kids, uh, the uh, from them, the little like kids misbehaving. You can have it back when you learn to make movies. Wow. So uh, they're having a uh, discussion about uh, Marvel movies and uh, and how not everyone should be uh, should be making them. Okay. That's okay, wild. that okay, I wouldn't give that's... Whitaker a complete pass, says Tardis. She had a few things to answer for, but Chidmel pretty much sank her battleship before it could get into the water. Oof. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah, again, Damn. which is why Chibnall's got a skedaddle, skedoodle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on, guys. They just showed the picture of the new guy. If the doctor can be a million different dudes, he eventually can be a black dude. Yeah, exactly. The question is if the actor is good. And if the writing can carry it, that should be the only thing that matters in the circumstance. Because unlike certain characters of popular media, the doctor's race really doesn't matter. It's one of the things that being mutable and interchangeable is part of the actual character itself. Exactly. All that matters is, yeah. is the actor good enough? We're is just... the writing solid enough? We're just going to have to wait and see as 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 BBC goes into, uh, goes into uh, production for the for the new season of Doctor Who with the new actor. And in the meantime, yeah, no, for the toxic fans who are prejudging the new guy, they need to shut the fuck up. Like, they did the same to Peter Capaldi after they did Matt it to Peter Capaldi. Like, they, they did, didn't they? Like, they, they did, did. like, oh, my God, this guy's like, he's oh, too, he's too old. old. Like, and he's not English. Like, um, so hey, did you think that David Tennant was English? The dude's Scottish also, ya hobos. So stop me if you heard this one. So BBC announces a new doctor. Yay! He's he's not he's 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 pale skinned. Yay! He's a man. Yay! But he's old. Boo! We're no! Thinking, yeah, exactly. Also, Mike, Mike over here was saying. Uh, don't forget, this is coming from people who cannot tell the difference between an English and a Scottish man. Right. To them, it all just sounds the same. Yeah, it sounds the same to me sometimes. Yeah, no, Scottish is country English. Actually, I think uh, Steph the alternate would argue that Yorkshire is country English. Uh, oh yeah, that's Scottish because Steph doesn't like, exist. It's more, uh, Scottish is more like uh, reverse Canada. Wait, hang on a minute. Angel. <laughs> okay, we need to settle this debate. Right. Hang on, let me let me settle this debate right now. Angel, question. This is geography. Now we're gonna get to geography. Is Scotland a country? Most definitely. Is Ireland a country? Yes. Is England a country? Yes. Is now what about the United Kingdom itself in its entirety? Like we could be best described as, you know, um its own like set of nations. It's a nation group. Yeah, it's a nation. It's a work of fiction. <laughs> It's a nation group. <laughs> you dope. <laughs> Mike, See, Mike the fact that you were able to describe all of those places so quickly and so simply, but the moment you get to the UK, you start stumbling trying to find a proper definition tells me everything I need to know. Okay, so you acknowledge that England is a real country. Of course it is. You will not acknowledge the United Kingdom as its own separate nation that just happens not. to have all the countries that I just listed out. Those countries are countries. The UK is not a country. Oh, my Lord. The UK is a Frankenstein's monitor of lands mass. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh my You're going to get it so bad. You what? made me this what? way, the father. Death gets her hands on you. She's good. <laughs> Angel, you've got some serious comeuppance coming to you in the future. Like she's oh, gonna, please. She's gonna I have really long hard. to stop fearing my dreams. <laughs> Let me see here. Um, Mike, Mike was saying the doctor can look like anyone. There was an old rumor that his regenerations were people he'd seen through time. Isn't that sort huh. of like 
how that worked and then they kind of made it official when they had Peter Capaldi come in and he was originally that one Roman dude from the Fires of Pompeii. And of course, yeah. Peter was awesome. Oh shit, Tardis Mike! Mike was... in the... Hang on a minute, Mike! Mike in the comments. I'm fr... Mike. Mike says I'm from the UK. I'm telling Steph. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll be happy to see all those imaginary numbers come after me. Oh god! So I guess damn. Mike is a bot. Angel. We're gonna have to censor him from the chat now. No, we're not censoring. You're evil. <laughs> it's like angels watching nothing but Matrix codes when it comes to the United Kingdom. It's just ones and zeros. Okay. One day, no. somebody claiming from the UK is gonna talk to me, and all I'm gonna hear is white noise. Dude, that is so <laughs> evil. You're. So He's, okay, like, I'm pretty sure that Steph is going to try to bring Mike Mike on and they'll fly in from the UK and they'll spank you like a like a freaking like this one bit I saw of someone who did a mod of GTA um, yeah. uh, the Scooby Doo gang <laughs> to Dick Dastardly and his dog and beating the crap out of him and it's all just people like GTA 5 online people uh, beating you up that's funny I'll me. bring the people here the Popcorn Planet people they'll stick up for me oh, me as the Union no, Jack you, Mike, 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 me Mike, as the Union Jack flat fist impacts my face man this simulation is getting real real ill like ow this actually hurts it's something man. wrong man this, this VR right. chat is more realistic than anything I could have possibly imagined. All right, all right. God let's get, ba let's get right. back on the subject. So here's the thing. If the, real, it's something I want to ask. Real quick, before we go in here, because I see uh, some more. Uh, Will Morris, uh, I don't really think it's just about the lore oh. angel. Chris Chinwell was the only writer who had previous experience writing Doctor Who. He went uh. with noobs who weren't really sci-fi writers either. So yeah, that it's not true. just Chibnall on there. Uh, let me see. Tardis always complains about change. David Tennant was too smooth soon. Matt Smith was too young. Peter Capaldi was too old. So after regeneration, three bears. We got Goldilocks for the Doctor. Mike, Mike, uh, 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 Will Moore is saying, Mike, Mike, he absolutely was. Peter Capaldi was the best. It's not Peter's fault that season eight started slow. Uh, then they're also saying, uh, let me see here, Will Morris uh, to Tardis. Anyone who complains about any Doctor being too old should really just turn in their fan card. And uh, Nikki Bella, I can just see the expression on Steph the Alternate's face now when she gets her hands on you. <laughs> and Tardis, all I'm saying is that after everything, I've accepted Hardware Wars as official canon in the Star Wars universe. And Ham Salad is my personal chief system. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. That is good. Yes. Oh, all right. So I have a real question. Go ahead. Hang on a minute. If... Oh, wait. First of all, wow. The, the toxicity of the Doctor Who fans are worse than I thought, number one. And number They're two... right up there with Star Wars fans. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Why was there no fucking criticism or shit-talking on John Hurd? Technically, he was the Doctor. Because technically, he's John fucking Hurt. On one hand, yes. Also, because John Hurt was only there for one special. He wasn't getting a whole show for himself. And he was seen as a spin-off doctor, a.k.a. what happens when shit goes bad -er than usual. Oh. Essentially, think about it this way. They would not complain about it because that's like telling you, and here's a cameo that lasts for a few hours. Are you sure about that? Because we've, we've already observed that, the star, that toxic fans will complain about just about anything. Oh, anything. I'm pretty sure that if I, if, I dig, if I dig deep enough, I will find somebody complaining about John Hurt somewhere. But it better not. The, it, the amount of criticism is equivalent with the amount of screen time. If he had a whole show to himself, that would have been different. But oh, yeah, the, 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 the Doctor Who fans will never be happy with no new Doctor because somebody somewhere will find some idiotic reason to complain about it. <laughs> not realizing that the actor slash actress is not the reason to complain about it. Um. Legend of Traveling Tardis is here daring us to say, like, don't maybe come on this podcast. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Do we want him to? Uh, no, you're you're good. You're good, man. Let's, let's... We can have you on another time. Another time. Definitely. But, yeah. Um, and yeah, Will Morris, War Doctor. He's my favorite character. I'm just like, yeah. they did expand on him in the comics and novels and the audiobooks when John Hurt was still alive, rest his soul. But... And they bl uh, blew up on that, just the story and the lore of no matter how bad he tries to just end it and finish it, the work is never done. He's just like, how much more of this fucking madness am I supposed to put up with? Pretty much. I never so, yeah. Yeah, technically, he's not a numbered doctor. You're right. He isn't. Yep. Ta John Hurt actually extended the time on Bug Big Finish Audios. Big Finish Audios. I'm very proud he was, the he was a doctor. Yeah. Uh, the War Doctor is my f personal favorite. 
uh, over here. So my, yeah, pers- my personal favorite is the ninth Doctor, or Chris Eccleston. Yeah, and he's I like the twelfth because he looks like an owl. <laughs> 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 it's because he's old, isn't no, it? No, it's Angel? because he's got yes. the owl eyebrows of Fury. Nope, he confirmed it. He said yes. Oh God damn it! <laughs> also, the eyebrows. Those Don't defend cool. Angel. No, it's like <laughs> I'm just over here thinking like, no, it's like what do you call it? Um, no, when when you get the very first glimpse of Peter Capaldi as Twelfth Doctor in that same special with the War Doctor, like oh, no, like oh, when I didn't know when I had it off, oh, all twelve of them, no sir, all thirteen, and you just see his eyes, like oh fuck, oh my, I, here sir, I didn't realize I owed you money. Here, shit, oh my god, Oops. those were the <laughs> eyes of purpose, and yes. that's and that if if the Doctor can just. Scary as shitless with that when he's in action mode. Like, oh, oh no, I fucked up. I don't even know what I did wrong. What did, did, don't, did, did you know anything about this? Juan had to clean his drawers after seeing no, that did. stare. That was horrifying, <laughs> and I loved it, and I couldn't wait to see more. So, yeah. yeah. Um, folks, we want to, of course, let you guys know. Uh, uh, we want to know what you think. Hit us up on this chat. We love every single one of y'all. We appreciate you showing up. And, yeah, Mike, Mike, Will Morris, Nikki Bella, Legend of Traveling TARDIS. Uh, we appreciate all the comments on here. We really do. It's been such a nutty ride. And so much so, even though I'm eating chocolate with almonds. However, Doctor Who isn't the only uh, developing news this week. Uh, another popular show, well, if it's still popular right now, is also hinting a continuation from their long, 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 long series. Jesus, Rooster Teeth, I forgot about one of this. Rooster Teeth's, uh, one of Rooster Teeth's greatest uh, animated series uh, that they have produced. Ruby is gonna be is coming back with the ninth season. Now, just a timeline. Hopefully, line. the last. Just a timeline. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Earlier this year, we had reported that we had reported that there was an announcement that Ruby is gonna be coming out with an anime called The Ice Queendom, and fans love yes. it. Holy hell yeah! Give me more of that anime shit. Now, earlier this week. Rooster Teeth put out a tweet say, uh, uh, hinting at, uh, at more news and announcements for season nine, and they will be announcing it at this year's RTX, which is their, which is the Rooster Teeth co- convention over in Austin, Texas, next month. I mean, in July. Not next Damn. month. Come on. So we hypothesized this. The last season of Ruby was released on November 7, 2020. Normally, they don't take this long to release a new season. And ever since, and considering all the scandals, difficulties, and problems that Rooster Teeth experienced recently, after the anime was released, the, well, there's that. <laughs> the collective reaction was a massive sigh of relief, a big helping gasp of, holy shit, finally, quality content. And I believe that you, Joe, you yourself said that there is no way Rooster Teeth was going to sit down and not try to announce something of their own, after because the these are the best yeah. news. <laughs> and it looks like you were right. Yeah, yeah, no, of course I'm right. You might as well fucking call me uh, Nostradamus right now. Joe Nostradamus. Joe Stradamus. Casabonamus. Yes, I am Joe Stradamus. I ha- can predict the future of anything that happens in nerddom. And I am right now making a future prediction right now. I'm going to mention it as vague oh. as possible. Oh, dear, dear and wise and humble <laughs> Joe Stradamus, tell us, give us your wisdom. Oh shit, Angel Mendez! In the month of July, you will uh, you will earn your just desserts. Yes. In July, you. <laughs> <laughs> when the stars align in July, and fucking Hades breaks the gate, and the mythical breachers from the United Kingdom come to take my soul. All right, all right. You are just riding that horse down to the no, no, end no, no. of the line. Let him. Let him. Oh, Lord. It makes it all the better when it happens. I'm not going to say shit, but you're going to get it, Angel. <laughs> okay. You know who's going to get it? The audience of Ruby. Allow me to make my own humble predictions. All right. Go right ahead. Before we, It's yeah, going before to we be no strange less than 10 episodes. <laughs> it's going to be less than 10 episodes. Half of it is going to be wasted on pointless drama. Most fight scenes will last 10 seconds, and somehow the plot will be even worse. That's my prediction. Yeah, and you know what? I'm not going to lie. And here's the thing. I'm pretty sure, like, we're in the minority because I'm sure there's a lot of hardcore Ruby fans that enjoy the the story, the the past seasons, no matter what. 
But how would you best describe the uh, the entire season of season eight, Angel? Downward slope. Yeah. <laughs> like here's That's the thing. It. Um, season seven, like we saw season seven, and they had a great, like they had a great uh, uh, story in season seven. They just got they to build up a good premise. Yeah, it it was it was awesome. They just got to Atlas, like, and spoilers for anyone who hasn't watched Ruby. Yeah, no, the team got to Atlas. They did more training. They got better. Well, as better as they could get, and you know, there's just a lot of. Uh, uh, a lot of social com a lot of social commentary and also some political subtext in this season in season seven subtext and Wait. then season subtext. eight came and the subtext became text and you see the problem is Ironwood was making a little too much sense so we gave him the worst superpower in the world so he could be this sort of final boss and then what followed was just basically one bad decision after another followed by some very contrived conflict. Anyway, we killed best girl. Yeah, Psst, they fuck killed, you, dead. They killed Penny, even though they, they killed the Robo Girl. They, <laughs> I mean, even though like, I don't know, I, I don't know from a story writing standpoint, like couldn't they come up with another way to to pass the powers of the maid without killing her? No, listen, Apparently we not. had to make this scene just so we could have some pointless whiny drama between John and Ruby next season when she's like why did you kill her and he's like because I had to and she's like no you didn't and he's like you don't understand Ruby I literally can't control myself I need to stab redheads and speaking of Ruby because Rooster Teeth likes to be vague as fuck more vague than I am <laughs> um, they posted a picture on their social media pages on Facebook and Twitter and it's just a picture of Ruby Rose looking on at the world that she just landed in because that's where they ended in season eight in the last stinger it literally shows that they're in a, a totally different world a different dimension wherever the hell that how, is how the hell do you get it isekai in a fantasy world does that they work? went to hawaii they're gonna have to fight urza miller in there oh god that motherfucker throws <laughs> hands yeah but urza miller's locked up in jail uh, oh, no. uh, you think the jail can hold back the fastest hands alive <laughs> His, his unceasing grudge against Hawaiian people cannot be quenched. His bloodlust of Hawaiian blood. It hungers. So on, the, so on the one hand, <laughs> yes, that gives Rooster Teeth fans more, uh, something to be more, more uh, excited about. In fact, the excitement is twofold. We're getting an anime and we're getting season nine. And hopefully, maybe this will be a chance for the writers to salvage the story that they left off in season eight. On Bro, the other hand. they've been cooking hand, on this thing for two years. They yeah. fucking better salvage that plot. On the other hand, if this trend continues, then yeah. Ouch. I mean, it'll be a it'll be it'll be less of a spark and more of a painful fart. Real quick, I'm seeing here, Will Morris didn't actually know that John Hurt had passed away. That was yeah, that was oh. back in 2017. Yeah. Sadly, unfortunately, yes. And that being said, he didn't get to live to see the stupidity that we are living in now. now he went out at the right time. He can rest in peace. Now, Wancho, I believe you saw the last season of Ruby with us. I did. <laughs> I, I recall, for you tomorrow, Angel. I recall very clearly when we got to that point in episode six, where the main characters made a decision so boneheaded that I recall with perfect clarity Juan, Juan staring at the screen with that exact same look on his face right now. And just getting up and going to the bathroom, not saying anything. He's just like, go, just going. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Oh man. And yeah, yes, yes, yes. Let's let's milk my my suffering some more. Oh, Eagle Chick fan. Uh, Eagle Chick fan. Hello. How are you doing? Tonight. Great banter tonight. Great. Yes, we're talking about Ruby from Rooster Teeth. I don't, I don't know, know if you like it or if you watch that series. Let's just put it this way: stop watching after the fourth season. You're yeah. better off. I mean, but also keep watching anyway, so we can share the cringe. Season five wasn't bad. I saw season five. I can't remember what happened in season five. Dude, we saw Yang's mom. So. Oh, that bitch. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that oh yeah, bitch. I forget. You're into milfs. Hey, shut to up. To be fair, though, do we, can we really call her a milf? It, it's just Yang's model with like a foot taller and black hair. I mean. Again. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. you're feeding like, it okay, to my yeah. fantasy angel. <laughs> I can't argue against that, but yeah. Maybe you know, this the whole last thing like, years. Hey, you guys want to thirst on Yang, but don't want to feel like you're thirsting on jailbait? Here you go, her mom. 
She's a horrible person, just like her daughter. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> nope. God. Guilty damn, give me all them titties. <laughs> now then, maybe, I'm maybe just, I'm in just this... Playing. Never, Maybe oh, this last Eagle Chick two fans years. never heard of it, but it's oh my god, she never heard of Ruby. Okay, okay. Just go like, watch the anime. Just fine. Just have her watch the just anime. Watch the watch anime. Watch Ice Queendom, That's and you're it. good. You'll Actually, well, no, Angel. I mean, if you want her to appreciate authenticity, then the first three seasons of Ruby would be something to recommend. Yeah, admittedly, the thing is, there was something that I can't explain about the first three seasons of Ruby. The, the dialogue was awkward. The animation was a goddamn mess. But there was a feeling of soul that I just don't feel there anymore. Yeah. Maybe I'm just it's thinking about it too hard. Ohm. Well, yeah, there's that too. That being said, you know what I'm expecting to happen? What? You know what I really hope it happens? What? Remember that time Demon Slayer outsold the entire comic book industry? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. I kind of want the anime of Ice Queen Dome to completely overshadow everything that Ruby is right now. <laughs> Just, just consume it like a giant amoeba. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wanted just... to hit so hard that the public consciousness is altered by it. And the next time somebody goes, hey, man, you see Ruby? I want the response to be, yeah, man, the anime was great. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, I think the best way to make a comparison to describe seasons one, two, three from Ruby, that was a re- that was when Monty Alm was at the helm. Um, it's basically like owning a rusty like a rustic cup that's that has like that has like some random artwork on it but and it and it's flaws there's flaws on the art but it's still like one of a kind it's still beautiful in its own right everything from yes. that point on is like a resin injected replica of that yeah that's it manu- looks the manu- same way yeah manufactured just mass produced cheaper. yeah it doesn't feel the void it doesn't it's but pain Give it back. Give it back to us. I feel it every night. My arm, my leg, everything they took from us. God, the animations right that I lost. Everything comes back to Metal Gear with you. <laughs> everything comes back to Metal Gear, period. I know. But hey, Ruby, uh, hey, Rooster Teeth, Rooster Teeth is, uh, that's not the only news that's coming out. Not just Rooster Teeth, not just Doctor Who, but apparently we're also getting. Another Resident Evil, either movie or series, coming out in Netflix. Damn. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> hey, hey, Angel, you want more? You want more Resident Evil on your TV screen? That's All not right. a video game. All right. No, I never wanted Resident Evil in my screen. That wasn't a video game to begin with. Okay. What is? To be fair, the first two movies were pretty cool. You know what? You know what was the unmistakably good. Resident Evil non-game product, the CG movies. There's okay, that. yeah, no, Resident Evil Degeneration, and I believe the other one was called Damnation. You motherfuckers are gonna sit down and watch Pendetta with me. Okay, okay, yeah, sure. I'll bring my it's kid along so to watch. He got, goodness knows he could use some exposure therapy when it comes to horror movies. He needs to learn. Oh my goodness, yeah, no. I'm there's... the best dad. I'm the <laughs> bestest dad there is. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get into it. So yeah, this was announced by Netflix because we haven't had enough uh, Resident Evil uh, shows and movies uh, yet. So give me just a second while I pull up some. Uh, oh uh, boy. Here. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, Angel. Oh, and yeah, Mike, Mike uh, definitely likes uh, Resident Evil Vendetta. Yeah, I. Vendetta is so see stupid. It. It's the best thing in the world. And it's like they saw John Wick and decided, what if we do that but more? All right, Will so according- Morrison, uh, starring Lance Riddick of The Wire and Fringe. All right. huh. so I have the article pulled up. According, like to, according to Variety.com, this was posted on May 12th, so two days ago, by Wilson Chapman. Send us the link so we can put it up on the chat so folks can read along. Absolutely. Give me just a second. Um, I'll do the thing before I read along. We want to, it would like we're trying to engage everyone into this discussion so you could follow along. That way, no one's left up high and dry. Oh no, dude, you're fine. I totally get your understanding. Sending it to Angel. Yeah, or like Resident, Resident Evil fans. Oh yeah, Angel should because Angel too. needs to be educated too. Okay, man, Are we're you, not going to make him why? an exception. Me the thing. I did send <laughs> it to you. No, you didn't. Check oh, here it messages. is. There it is. There. Oh, okay. So the uh, so the headline reads: Resident Evil goes apocalyptic in the first trailer for Netflix live action series. Oh, it's a series. Yes. So just a year it after is. the premiere of its last live action adaptation, the Resident Evil franchise has risen from the grave in the first trailer for the upcoming Netflix horror series. 
based on the long-running Capcom survival horror franchise, Resident Evil stars Lance Reddick as Albert Wesker, one of the main antagonists of the original video game series. Wesker! Wesker! Tamara Smart and Ella Balinska portray the younger and older versions of Wesker's daughter, Jade, while Sienna Agudong, Adeline Rudolph, Paola Nunez, Ahad Razamir, Connor Gossati, and Turlo Convery round out the cast in the undis and undisclosed roles. So let's Holy see. shit. So the okay, so we're getting Wesker up in this. Absolutely. And, and uh, I'm reading and, this. And this makes no fucking sense. Wait a second. Wait a goddamn second. What's up? I know what this is. What is this? What is this? I am reading the synopsis of the plot. Angel. This is not Resident Evil. Angel. This is... Say it Sorry. out loud. This is an original series with a Resident Evil skin over it. Ah! You motherfuckers! I fucking knew you it! You knew! I fucking knew it! <laughs> oh. So they've either maybe. not been paying attention to the new Halo series on Paramount Plus, or maybe they have been paying attention to the new series and they're like, anything they could do, we could do better. Or worse. Oh, win, God better than damn it! <laughs> we could, if they're ignoring the, <laughs> the prime source material and going with the ancillary stuff because video games are too lowbrow, then wait till they get a load of us! We're not even going to mention the Umbrella Corporation. <laughs> the fact that they're trying to treat Albert you, Wesker as the main character should tell you everything you need to know. Fans, if you think this is all canon, then you're stupid. Yep. <laughs> oh, you know, Netflix. Thank you, Will Moore is like, oh, you. What? Oh, uh, you. No wonder they're putting up ads at the beginning of uh, next year. They no need wonder I'm canceling my subscription with that shit. I don't know. So, no. It's okay, Angel. <laughs> Dude, we'll, keep our, we'll keep a uh, subscription. Yeah, because we'll I suffer for you. Yeah, because no, I still have the shows I like. I like watching Space Force. It's fucking funny. Just buy it. <laughs> the plot it for, ain't yeah, worth the it. Plot for the it's new nothing, series nothing's has, worth it. Yeah, according to the article, even though you already busted the plot, Angel, the plot for the new series has been kept under wraps, but the teaser trailer set to the famous 1971 pop song, I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing in Perfect Harmony, reveals that the show will be split in between two timelines. The first, set in 2022, sees Jade moving with her father and her sister, Billy, to the futuristic new Raccoon City. Although her surroundings what? seem initially idyllic, uh, uh, idyllic, 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 Jade slowly becomes aware that her father and the Umbrella Corporation that run New Raccoon City are hiding dangerous secrets. The second, the second set in 2036, follows Jade as she explores a post-apocalyptic London and fights for her survival against the bloodthirsty, infected victims of a global outbreak caused by the Umbrella Corporation. <laughs> okay. I can I can appreciate the attempt at the structure here. Split timelines giving us uh, bits and pieces of the story. I can appreciate that. I like that. It's creative. It's different. However... Trying to play off Albert Wesker as if he had a family that he gave a damn about. What was his whole thing again? Wasn't it complete global saturation? He basically found out that he was a genetically engineered human created to be a vessel for the original Wesker, the founder of Umbrella. And upon finding out, he killed the man and decided that he would become a god. Previously, he was just a ruthless mercenary, only interested in advancing the interest of the Umbrella Corporation. But when he found out about that, he went completely fucking insane. Point <laughs> is, he's, he's never been a good person, and the concept sort of family only exists in his brain as tools I can use. Oh my goodness. This yeah, is isn't that how he primarily tries to screw around with the Redfields, for Christ's sake? They're like the brother-sister yep. tag team of the franchise, and this motherfucker screws with both of them unmercifully. Pretty yes, Nikki Bella, He's Cobra just a Kai dick. Season 5. I still want Hillary yeah! Swank. Yes. We can talk about that in a second. But this is just like brain fucked all eight episodes of the new resident evil series will be premiering on netflix on stop that that's why they're losing money on See july you? on july 14th stop that See no the not loss what only the pain that, and suffer one of the things that disney plus is doing right with like their marvel studio series seed the episodes out make us come back for more Give us the good shit in a dropper. 
like the, we do with our rabbits in, in, in that that I've got over here that have water bottles with the droppers on it. Make me lick for more. Num, 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 num. Don't just <laughs> dump a bucket in my face and call it a drink. For Christ's yeah. sake. Everything about this plot synopsis feels like we try to make our own zombie series, but nobody likes The Walking Dead anymore. And I'm afraid that my original plot will not catch up. So, wait, hang on. Here's a famous, well-known video game property. I'm going to skate its body and wrap its still bleeding epidermis <laughs> over my script. Oh, my God. Apparently, it's like the Book of the Dead from from Evil Dead. It's made out of... <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> Now, according to this article, the Netflix this Netflix series is being led by Andrew Dabb, who is best known for his work on the popular CW Dab. series Supernatural. Okay, what? this gives me a little hope. The guy that worked on Supernatural is doing this? Yes. Okay, this... Huh. Oh, okay. Huh. Okay. So there is a silver lining. There okay. is one. So let's get to see how he works at directing this. Okay. The, the, he certainly knows how to do with the horror aspect, so uh -huh. hey. And he knows how to do drama. And he knows how to do comedy because, you know, the, those Winchester brothers, they're freaking they're a fucking tag team. It's like, OK, let's put Elvis and Costello together. Let's make them brothers and let's make them uh, 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 demon hunters. That was pretty cool. And <laughs> I mean, Lewis and Costello. This does gives me a little bit of hope. And this Lewis is and actually like his gear. Like this is his. Abbott and Costello. Jesus, why do I keep messing this up is, the name? This is uh, Andrew's. Uh, this is Andrew's element. I mean, unlike the, the guy who directed Chris this. Chibnall. Yeah, and like uh, who did Doctor Who? Who did Doctor Who, and who was complete? Who completely like was not the right guy to be behind that season? This might actually work. Yeah, once you ignore the fact that we're literally softly names some plot points around. Uh, just Will watch. Morris Fucking Leon is gonna show up. He's just gonna be a dog. No. Oh God! Come on, okay. man! Don't Dude. disrespect Leon like that. No, Angel. You're right. I think the show will do it for me. It's okay. Just, just be thankful it's not Zack Snyder because he'll bring in <laughs> he'll bring in Jill Valentine as the looking completely totally hot, and then she and then they'll blow her brains out in the first five minutes of the show in slow motion with operatic so music with Instagram filters. So you can see every bit of brain matter fly out of her hollowed out skull. Enjoy your dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and this and the episode gradually gets darker as it goes along. And I'm not talking about tone. I mean actually darker. It'll go to monochrome and then just fade to black before the end of the show. Uh, Zack Snyder, you okay, man? You sure? No, you he's not okay. Doctor, but he's such a good guy, though. He may be a good guy, not the best director. And that's yeah. not the point. The point is, Will Morris over here is agreeing with us. They should go to a week to week format. They don't give their shows time to build buzz and breathe. Absolutely. No, don't I the agree. whole fucking season here. Now that, being, now that being said, yes, uh, to jump into a Oh, God. Oh, no, Will Morris actually came in. Uh, Andrew Dobb uh, actually oversaw the worst seasons of Supernatural. Their last good show rucker, runner was Jeremy Carver, who was the current oh, show runner of Doom Patrol. No. I, I take back oh, everything okay. I, I, I take, take back, back everything optimism. I just said. So even the slightest silver lining has been smothered by the dark skies. Damn you, Will Morris! How dare God he enlighten it. us with the truth? Damn so, it. shit, no wonder he was willing to do this project. Nobody liked what he did with Supernatural. So he's like, oh yeah, guess what I'm gonna do with Resident Evil now? Oh God, no. <laughs> Acknowledge my greatness or I'll God. kill the franchise. <laughs> kill Too late. Not our franchise. All right. Man, now, you know what the saddest thing is, though? Resident Evil 7 and 8 have been met with resounding success. So you could do something with it. They're not going to do a damn thing with it. We're still going back to fucking Raccoon City. Stupid man thing. I'm fucking balling. Balling. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I still can't believe that she did that for everyone at Holiday Mets. Uh, she was the best. She was oh, yes. the best. Um. But yes, to touch on it briefly, since Nikki <laughs> the, Bella brought it up, um, um, real quick, and yes, make uh, a quick one. Uh, Will Morris is agreeing. Yes, my new nickname: Killer of Hope, Destroyer of Dreams. <laughs> Will Morris, you are become death, Destroyer of Dreams. Oppenheimer is smiling up from the bowels of hell. For you, I, Angel Hill. Either I, <laughs> Angel, I think it might, Will Morris might either be your neck, your new best friend, or he might actually take the title away from you. This might be a lie. 
<laughs> is he from the UK? I don't no. know, man. I think you might have to relinquish the, the king of, of uh, the destroyer of dreams and because we might have a new heir to the throne. Fine. He can have the destroyed dreams, but I'm keeping my accent. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst divorce I've ever seen, guys. So, Damn. Brief, so briefly touching on it right now because Nikki Bella brought it up. Yes. Cobra Kai Season 5 is coming, and it's coming a little earlier than expected. It All right. Be Good news. Yes. Yay. Ten episodes, because I've kept track with Cobra Kai. They usually have ten episodes every season. They will all be revealed on Netflix on September 9th. Hmm. All the right. last season of Damn. Cobra Kai, I won't spoil it for you, but man, it is so freaking awesome. And they brought back, like, just a minor spoiler, they brought back the character of the evil Cobra Kai instructor, Terry Silver, who was in The Karate Kid Part 3. Wow. So they're really digging into the background and pulling anyone they can. This feels like nostalgia, but, like, done right. It's, yes, it's weird. It's done right. Dude, How do I explain Angel, it? you have to watch season four so you can un so you can appreciate like the older Terry Silver and how and how he descends once again into madness. I like uh, the idea that you know, thinking back on it, I think one thing Cobra Kai gets right that many shows don't is the idea of highlighting or calling back to previous main characters and antagonists in. 99% of the, of the times it happens is done as a form of parody, of mockery. But this is a genuine 100% serious trade off. No, these are real people. There was no happily ever after, after the credits roll. Life kept going and we get to see it. And uh, God damn it, I can't explain. What's the word I'm looking for? Multifaceted. I like how multifaceted all these characters feel, right down to their flaws, their virtues, their struggles. Is it? It's an actually really well made drama. Like it's just really well made. Shit. Yes. Shit. Absolutely. And the actor who plays Johnny Lawrence, William Zepka, he is still my favorite my favorite character out of the entire show. The main character, Johnny Lawrence, because it all started yes. with him. Yeah, no. The like, story of a man trying to get good. And holy crap. He no, learned... he's not trying to get good. He's trying to kick ass, okay? And take names. And like and uh, and what he and at the end of it all he actually gains something out of it. He gained some heart. Yes, he did. He gained. He still keeps his weird ass, uh, weird ass eighties machismo, but he still has heart. And so you're saying that he has experienced character development? Absolutely, absolutely. I totally agree. Um, Will Morris is over here saying that no, he is not British, but his lady is totally uh, from the UK. But his lady totally is. So perhaps she's a bad influence. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, and uh, Wilmore's also saying Thomas Ian Griffin is a damn good actor. He's also a writer. He wrote for the TV show Grimm for several seasons. Ooh, nice. I can huh. get behind that. Yeah, okay, no, cool. Give me just like, a second. Here. We're, we're definitely going to be keeping our eyes on Cobra Kai. Uh, and like I said, I won't be satisfied <laughs> unless they actually have Hillary Swank show up for whatever season they have as their finale as their as their last one because like if you're gonna bring it all back bring her back to you why the hell not i'm sure she doesn't actually have to go into kung fu mode but she would wouldn't mind throwing some freaking kid over a balcony oh wait was that too soon oh <laughs> i'm evil bruh yeah i know I know, bro. The guy that the 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 the, 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 the bad guy from the, the from the next Karate Kid movie, but played by Michael Ironside. Like, holy shit! How come nobody in the school did a background check on him? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but anyways, getting and yeah, it was an illegal kick. All right, Tommy was always a champ. They didn't do it the, money. the money, I know, I know. All right, hi, K Storm. Hello, yes, there's K Storm back. K Storm says hello, but now let's Glad touch on the next article here before we get onto the video gaming. So we will, I won't oh, take too much you know time what? on it. This stuff has gone absolutely take all the time crazy. You need, please, here. like we're dealing with crazy shit. We've got some great uh, Netflix franchises uh, that are coming back. We have some that are starting up that don't seem to be doing well, and uh, we have we uh, have Ruby one... that'll be continuing with season nine soon. And that's mid. That's mid. Like, okay, we've got some crazy shit going on. We got people clamoring for the video game industry to weigh in on Roe v. Wade as if they ever take the video games industry seriously. Um, 
what the hell else could get worse over here? Next thing you're going to tell me, you've got an article here saying that the Yakuza are making a return in the pop culture zeitgeist in Japan. One, it's 2022. At this point, anything is possible. To be fair, though, the Yakuza games were very, very popular. To the no, point not that they the had Yakuza act- games. I mean the oh, actual Yakuza. The actual like the Yakuza. criminal organization. All right, so I pulled up an article here from Fightful, and just going right into the wrestling news. Um... Kota Ibushi, who is a one of the greatest wrestlers in New Japan Pro Wrestling, the first ever IJ, IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, accuses the promotion of New Japan Pro Wrestling management of power harassment after threats to terminate his contract. That's the oh, headline damn. that reads on this article from Fightful. I will send it over to you guys. Give me just a second here. Because you all must be educated. Education is important. Oh, my yes. God. Oh, no. Remember, kids, knowing is half the battle. The other half is incredible violence. Apparently. <laughs> G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. Oh, man. G.I. Joe. All right. Oh, wait, there it is. Second. You got to be kidding me. Yeah, no, no, no. I kid you not. And uh, see if you can open that up. And if you can't, then just Google search it. But anyways, so getting to it. Um, this article was printed by Jeremy Lambert on May 11th. Kota Ibushi continues to speak out against New Japan Pro Wrestling management. Ibushi spoke, spoke out against N- <laughs> NJPW's management, namely uh, Kikuchi, who is a part of the talent relations department, revealing that Kikuchi threatened to end Ibushi's contract with the promotion due to an appearance at a Just Tap Out show on March 4th that was not approved by Kikuchi. Taking to social media once again, Ibushi responded to fans asking about the situation, and Ibushi said, and I quote, This is the power harassment that happens daily to the non-homegrown talents in Japan. I don't think I've ever asked if I could return by a phone call. Of course, I've never had a single meeting, and that line message, the threat message, suddenly came for the first time in months. This is outrageous if you think about it normal. I can uh, re- normally. I can release every line messages. I didn't mind but it felt wrong to stay quiet. I'm really calm and collected. I don't know what makes me officially fired, but saying it via line message shows Kikuchi's personality and the president's instruction. There are too many other things to talk about, but you'll know it soon. The truth can't be concealed. I'm totally calm. I was just disappointed that this low-level person, Kikuchi, was my boss and felt sorry uh, that, uh, that I faced power harassment from him. Damn. This man just really went online and said that his boss was bitch tier. Pretty much. Uh, oh my goodness. It's crazy. Shit. In later messages, Ibushi said he believed that he would be fired, though there has been no official word from Ibushi or New Japan regarding his termination. Yeah, and he pretty much uh, put out a tweet. Uh, 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 yeah, and this was a tweet from, uh, yeah, go, uh, yeah um, someone shared the tweet. Uh, saying that it's uh, addressing the matter like K- K- Kikuchi is a matchmaker booker. He's a little fat guy with curled hair who is often around the seconds. <laughs> I believe that the current president gave him the order. I'll be back when I have more solid information. What I saw was so dark. Unbelievable things are happening. Ouch. Okay. This is sounding very ominous without us saying anything specific. I'm getting a little worried. This man is going to disappear. Yeah. Oh, and- God damn it. I was only kidding about the Yakuza. <laughs> oh man yeah no and it's there's there's a there, yeah this situation is pretty bad and it and if and if the, and just earlier Juancho I, I know I shared it with you it was a tweet like it was a tweet that was uh pu- that was uh put out and I think I shared it to you on a screenshot let me see if I can uh, recall it on my uh photos here here we go oh yeah uh, uh golden underscore kuma shared a tweet from coda and, and he basically uh, commented saying, Oh God, Ibushi finally dropped the word, which means anti-social organization in Japan, a.k.a. the Yakuza. This could lead Shit. to a massive nationwide scandal oh! in the Japanese wrestling scene. Oh, shit. Ah! No, don't do that. Oh, oh man. God. I was just kidding. I was we just thought. Kidding. We fucking thought. I was just fucking kidding, man. <laughs> Son of a bitch. You know, on one side, there is something somewhat refreshing about knowing that there's organizations out there that are just as scummy as the WWE. But on the other hand, I'm not really surprised. The Yakuza may not be like big on the scene, 
but they got their fingers in a lot of pies in Japan. And the goddamn Japanese government for crying out loud! They were there whenever they were there in the early uh, to, to yes. mid fifties after uh, during the post World War Two occupation when we were all getting worried that that freaking Japan was was go going to be a little too socialist for our taste because of what happened in China. So we helped install Yakuza as part of the government. Now, Unfortunately, the Yakuza be being part of the inside business is something that has been going on for quite some time. Yeah, you no, know how they say uh, that the Yakuza like to set up fronts for legitimate business yeah. so they can be seen as legitimate? Yeah, pretty much. Well, to after a, a while, bit, to give the a fronts bit of, become legitimate. To give a little bit of a history lesson here, guys. Um, hey, Joey Little up is, is in here. Hi, Joey, Joey Little. Little. Hello. Hello. Um, I want to get into a history I mean, Joey Lilly, my bad. All right, Juan, please. Now, um, the, the Yakuza has actually been involved, like... Not directly involved, but to give a little bit of a history lesson. So, New Japan Pro Wrestling was originally founded by uh, Antonio Inoki, who was also a, who was also a wrestler, a promoter, and he was also a high level politician. And he was a hmm. and he boxed uh, Muhammad Ali, if I remember correctly. Yes, he did. Interesting. He hosted a he's he's hosted a lot of great events to help with his uh, with his uh, political campaigns, including one of the events to help uh, negotiate uh, hostages that were uh, at that, uh, Japanese hostages that were held in North Korea. Now, his mentor, who goes by the name of Ricky Dozan, he was killed by the Japanese mafia because he's Korean and he kept it under and he tried to keep it a secret. But as his popularity grew in Japan, his nationality became apparent. It's that is fucking wild, man. So, yeah, I know the Yakuza have been part of pro wrestling since the, the, since back then, since Antonio Inoki. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. And no, yeah, no. And it's not. It, yeah, no. That information <laughs> is all over Google. And former WCW uh, vice president, uh, vice president Eric Bischoff even detailed that in Dark Side of the Ring. Holy shit. That is insane, man. Um, I'm, like uh, Legend of Traveling Tardis is trying to lighten the mood here. I'm not wearing any pants. Film at 11. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky Thank you Fried for movie. that. Thank you for the Kentucky Fried I picture. I appreciate that. Thank Joey you. Joey Lilly. Now, this is Prime also... Time. This might... If this, hi there, Joey Lilly. If this information is also is true, this might al also damage a certain American wrestling promotion that New Japan is currently uh, working with, All Elite Wrestling. AEW is holding their super show with New Japan on June 26th. Their super show being called The, the Forbidden... Forbidden Door! At the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> Maybe it's a good idea that you're not going over to Chicago. Holy shit. <laughs> Anything goes wrong, and they'll be capping the fans. They don't give a damn. They just pull out guns and start firing into the crowd. Yeah. They, they do, no, they do not give a damn. And Tony Khan's just going to be in there like, I don't have enough nose candy for this one. <laughs> so, Angel, what are your thoughts on this development with uh, New Japan and uh, the Yakuza being potentially involved, according to Ibushi? Honestly, I would genuinely not be surprised. In fact, I would be surprised if the Yakuza weren't involved in this kind of thing. They got so many fingers in so many pies in Japan that something tells me that if somebody starts digging into it, shit's just going to start falling apart real quickly. I don't know why he didn't say anything specific, but the fact that he's willing to come out and put that information out there, I honestly worry for his safety. Yeah, no crap. kidding. And actually, Juan, just a bit of news for you. Be right uh, back. In, in case you didn't know, Kota Ibushi actually had a cup of coffee in the WWE at one point. I didn't know this. 2016, uh, during the Cruiserweight Classic. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Nice. Bit. But that being said, you know, no, this is very fucked up. This is really fucked up. And if this and if this, and if this breaks out and it, if this becomes a big thing, not it will seriously, seriously damage the credibility of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and m certain managerial heads are going to roll. Not to mention the, uh, the the backlash and the collateral damage that AEW is going to face. You really think that they're going to deal with that sort of thing while their uh, while their contract with uh, with Warner Brothers Discovery is on the line? Oh, you Remember bet! You, if this happens, if this unfolds, you bet your ass that Tony Khan and AEW and anyone in a and L everyone else in AEW they will do their best to try and stay away from all that bad shit. They can't avoid it, though. They can't avoid it over here. And, yeah, Joey Lilly, you're at your second job. I hope you're doing all right. Um, we hope you're uh, not not working too hard like Will Morris is over here saying. Glad that you could join uh, the controlled chaos that is the Ravens flock. Yeah, thank you, Will Morris. Yeah, for that. I like that. Controlled chaos. That's good. That's uh, good way to do it. Considering that you like Shad Al the Edgehog. Yeah. Hey, shut up. Chaos He's cool. Control. Shut up. He's cool. Yeah, because what? Hey, sweet roll. <laughs> oh, God. It's just like taking candy from a baby, which, which is which fine, is fine by, by me. me. 
I like that. I'm going to use that. I will use that. <laughs> You all right. Try hard. So that's enough news from the wrestling world for now. We've pretty much covered all the bases. Angel, we're going to turn the table over to you. I believe you've got some video game news for us. Now, Juan did mention it briefly earlier on how there are certain video gaming industries no, who are the, the video game industry. The video game is industry being is being silent, quote unquote, about the Roe versus uh, Roe v. Wade issue. Ah, that one in particular. The circumstance is once again an extremely complex case of some dumbass journalists thinking they're going to be an activist. Apparently, this is not a singular case. Due to the particular case of the Roe versus whatever problem, and the whole delicate topic of the industry and the problem with the abortion, certain journalists have been trying to reach out to many game companies, trying to get their opinion. The vast majority actually know every single one of them has told the guy to shut the hell up. This particular case is a single insignificant instance of what happened with the PlayStation company. Upon being addressed or asked about their opinions on the case, the CEO of Sony essentially came out saying, in times like this, we need to respect everyone's opinions. And in a better world, he would have stopped there. Instead, he kept going and made like a two hour paragraph about his cats. <laughs> oh my God. It was like he was trying to basically say it like we we need to respect people's differences in their opinions about such a delicate and divisive issue, and to yes, show you that makes how sense. we have more in common than we have uh, in differences. Here's five whole paragraphs about my two cats <laughs> and how I wish I had a dog. A severe case of how do you do, fellow kids? God Almighty! Like oh okay. my goodness! Like I'm gonna actually share. The opinion piece that was sent to me by uh, K Storm on this, Go right uh, ahead. Th which was put up by Daily Coast, and <laughs> I'm gonna share that. I sent it to you, Angel, because just the smarm from the person taking the this guy down is hysterical. Um, but because, like, yeah, whenever the video game industry is tapped, it's either because they people want to try and vilify it for some reason or another, or because they think that people, that the video game industry isn't being respected, uh, respectable enough by being a part of a bigger uh, divisive issue. Like, motherfucker, what? Like, you don't look at video gamers that often to know <laughs> how people react to it. Most of the time, yeah, you're going to have a pack of assholes who are like, yeah, I'm going to get me as many chicks pregnant as I want and they can't stop me like oh, you're gonna God. have those idiots but they're usually in your headphones trying to talk smack at the end of the day they know for a fact they can't go on and actually have that kind of uh, 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 worldview without being punched in the mouth by every uh, uh, person with a uterus they come across hang on before we go any further Joey, Joey, Little. Joey Little the person on the phone sounds like the guy from the Wizard of Oz when they get to the gate that is a compliment I don't uh, wait which person are you referring to talking about Angel That's oh talking about Angel wait what are you talking about Angel? <laughs> are you talking about me? Or are you talking about Juan? I need to watch the Wizard of Oz. No, they're um, are you talking no that the guy the on the phone, I believe he's referring to they're referring yeah. to Angel. Are you talking about the 2D animated picture that is Angel? <laughs> are you talking about me? Or are you talking about I Angel? am in Let fact a two dimensional being. I have no proper debt to myself. I exist in a flat surface. Ah, Angel, the great and terrible. Ah, the great, the great and terrible <laughs> Angel. Hey, Angel, we found you a new title, pal. Wonderful. The two-dimensional one. That's what they call me. There you go. Okay, it is you, Angel. It's you. So, yeah, the actual Bloomberg email, Jim Ryan, decided that he was not going to take a stance on abortion rights. Instead, he wrote that the company's community are multifaceted and diverse, holding many different points of view. He wrote that we owe it to each other and to PlayStation's millions of users to respect differences of opinion amongst everyone in the internal and external community. <laughs> respect does not equal agreement, but this is fundamental to who we are as a company and as a value global brand. Now, the funny thing is, up to that point, I can actually agree with it because this is the best non-opinion opinion you can give. Because, yeah. let's, let's be honest, this is about the money. We don't want to piss off potential investors, so I'm just going to shut my fucking mouth. But he and could have then he went, dead. he could have stopped there, and then he just went, but wait, there's more. There's more. Let me tell you about my dogs. <laughs> and he went on a five-paragraph stance talking about his pets. Woof. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So like, <laughs> oh, God. If, if you're right, if you're out of touch on Google... You should get a picture of every single video game CEO in the world. God every single one my. at the same time. 
Just oh. holy shit, man. Oh. Oh, the cr- I cannot cringe hard enough. I literally can't. But like, let's be fair. Like I mentioned earlier, the, like folks who try to, who try to make a name as journalists, they're not trying to they, like whoever this writer is from uh, from uh, Washington Post or whatever. They're not doing. Uh, they're not jumping in on this mess just for actually giving the video game industry a platform they're doing it because it's a cheap and easy pop and it's a cheap and yes. easy political hit because like yeah bow wow wow yippee yo yippee gay where my <laughs> dog's at fuck with me now thank you legend of the traveling tardis for that lol <laughs> so, like no seriously it's it's it makes no sense it makes no sense like folks usually like, went okay try and put yourself as the joe schmo everybody dude who doesn't who isn't a die-hard, hardcore gaming person. How often do you hear about anything involving the video game industry in your average, everyday media consumption? It's usually in a, oh my god, this video game is so violent, it's making our kids kill each other! Clutch. Yeah. Pretty much. Or, when a new console comes out. And you gotta have it because of FOMO. You gotta have no, it that's when it happens, and the people on the other side of the console war need to die. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Angel, who is adopting himself as part of the PC master race, is sitting on his throne made of his brain, <laughs> which also functions as a hovercraft. So you're sitting around like Professor Xavier <laughs> in the X Men uh, in the X Men comics in the yellow hover chair, just moving around, like, gliding, around. Simple, gliding around, fucking gliding around at sixty frames per second. <laughs> Hey, hey, fuck! Wait a minute. Th- does that make me Magneto? I kind of yes. want to be Magneto. No, you are now Jewish. You get nothing else. Angel, hey, Jose, let's play nice, kids. Everyone knows Nintendo is king. Anyway, point oh! is, <laughs> excuse, excuse me, I'm gonna <laughs> kill some motherfuckers now. <laughs> this man's gonna die. Forget. Step one, get to me fast enough for me to wring my hands around your neck. Hey, 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 Angel, 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 chill, man, <laughs> chill, man. Let's talk about something a little more constructive, something a little, a little more positive. Like abortions. God, uh, I was damn. going to say Activ- oh. I was going to say Activision Blizzard. Oh. Oh God, uh. yes. Wait, real quick before it, uh, traveling tard is saying, "Mommy says any time, every time a bell rings, a, jur- a, a journalist gets another dopamine hit." Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. God damn, okay. you deserve a cookie for that. Delicious yeah. cookie. Your mama is a very smart mama. Now, gentlemen. Yes. Mm-mm. Seriously, this well, fire the is director so- of- yeah. mm, Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, like, man, this fire of activity is blizzard is so fucking hot. How the hell are we not sitting around a campfire eating cooked uh, uh, hot dogs and cooked, uh, yeah, cooked wieners Ro- and cooked marshmallows? <laughs> roasted marshmallows. Roasted marshmallows and roasted wieners. Because enough time passes for the fire to go down and them to rise again. <laughs> blizzard, why do we fall? So it can burn even brighter. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, obviously, hit us up, Angel. Do it. Do the it. director of PlayStation making a stupid statement that massive mood whipslash is admittedly pretty damn cringe. But this can be simply be told as being a mistake of reading the room. That's understandable. Blizzard, on the other hand, because they ladies and gentlemen, be satisfied with rolling their own corpse around a lava pit, a la Darth Vader. <laughs> If you have missed every single episode for the last seven months that we've been covering this continuously increasing pile of garbage, you may be a little lost about what's going on. <laughs> so, Blizzard has had issues, whether it is about the decidedly cartoony, villain like actions of CEO Bobby Kotick, the love or lawsuits from California that seem to be even involved the governor of the state behaving like a fucking tool of the company's behalf. The wild shit about the sexual harassments, the firings, the horribly unequal hiring procedures. Well, Blizzard doesn't have much of a reputation left to savage. So, (laughs) recently, it has been revealed that when the company needs to make changes on how they hire and treat diverse employers and public-facing characters, they decided to use the power of numbers. That's right. According to a post published yesterday on Activision Blizzard's website, 
The trust is that employees at King, by their own admission, working of hours, created a tool that breaks down character attributes and rates them on how diverse they are. The idea, as the Post argues, is to guard against unconscious bias and exclusion when it comes to the creation of their games and their characters. The metrics are culture, race, age, cognitive ability, physical ability, body type, facial features slash beauty, gender identity, sexual orientation, and socioeconomical background. Which means that they put these motherfuckers through a filter and they're using a fucking gray chart to determine how appropriately diverse their characters are. We have minority power levels, baby! Oh my god. <laughs> A system that will evaluate you based on on diversity, based on demographics. So how, do, how high do you, how do you guys think we rank in there? <laughs> I'm pretty sure if if it's that stupid, we're pretty much down the pecking order. Yeah, so get this. Using Overwatch character Anna, for example, she's an elderly, badass Egyptian lady that is a sniper. Now, she has points in culture, race, age, physical ability, and gender identity somehow, even though she's straight and had a kid, whatever. Essentially, the tool seems to imply that the idea is that a cis, heterosexual, white male character is the default, and that factors away from that are essentially diversity points, which is a disgusting assumption to codify, even if things to work out that way in practice. Ideally, decades of bad results should not create a default as much as they should be something to recognize, you know, in the serial ubiquitous. So, if that doesn't make you incredibly uncomfortable, I don't know what does. I, I need the article for this. I need yeah, to. can you send it to him? Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, you sent it to I, me, but can you send it to him? I, oh, yes, I'm going to send you both of them. I want you to imagine the idea that apparently the average white dude has no culture, no diversity, no sexuality, no facial features or beauty standards. You are just default. And then when you add points in that, you get diversity. This is so dumb. Oh, what baby. Guess what? Thank you, K-Storm, for that. Yo, I get this, though. Apparently, this stupid thing that was born so dumb. from okay, the... K-Storm, I love you, hun. What the fuck? <laughs> This was born from the idea that apparently between 2017 and 2021, nearly 80% of the highest selling games in the world feature white male protagonists, according to a studio produced by Diamond Lobby. So they claim that this needs to be part of the incubation process from the start, baked into the pipeline as a missable, inconsistent step, which is what the tool was assigned to be. So essentially, these racist motherfuckers decided, you know what video games have too much of? White people. How do we fix it? Bring out the Pokemon fucking advantage type chart. Oh my goodness. <laughs> a comment from Kyle. <laughs> oh, well, remember when video game creators were actually concerned about making actual video, video games? games? You think oh, Kyle what a wonderful world. Would, uh, would have put up with any of this political correctness bullshit? Bro, oh. this is genuine political correctness gone mad. Like, context be damned. If, Imagine if in, okay, let's imagine movies. Imagine somebody gets you into a room and goes, you know what these movies have too much of? Black people, but that's okay. I found a way to apply diversity and they pull out a fucking pie chart. Oh, it's so stupid. It is incredibly out of touch it's at best stupid. and disgustingly racist at worst. Like it's <laughs> pretty much. Like, oh my fucking God. How does this even work? Yeah. What the fuck? Oh, no. I... It gets better. They plan oh. to use this for other things. While the Diversity Space Tool, the DST, was designed for game character conception, Comatas also sees it as having broader applications amongst all entertainment and media platforms. They claim that the traits and measures are applicable to a wider entertainment verticals, including TV, film, and literature. The only change required if used in these verticals would be the baseline traits, which would be calibrated to be relevant to the genre and universe each character exists in. Bro. We found it. After all these years, we have the tokenizer. Oh the diversifier. God. Oh my fucking god! The tokenizer. No, 
Okay. When you think yeah. about it, this explains all the wildly out of place decisions for casting in that new Lord of the Rings show. Oh my they literally God. look at the cast of this European main novel on a European ass country by a European ass man who wrote most of the characters to be white and they decided, you know what? I haven't been racist enough today. Get out the pie chart of type advantages. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> And Will Morris, he's <laughs> right in the comments. Wow, that's peak stupid. It's so, like we've literally come up with a computer algorithm to optimize racial inclusivity in like it, 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 and diversity in your media entertainment consumption diets. I'm like, please stop. imagine, please imagine say how di- like you're like Andre here. I'm already a minority because I'm Spaniard and I'm born in Cuba. But I know that I get away with some shit because my skin is not darker than it should be. You get away but with all I know is, shit, all I know is, if I was a black dude and I heard that shit, I would be insulted. Imagine that there is a black character in a video game, not because the creator wanted to put a black character in there, but because a bunch of suits told him, no, 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 we gotta put a black character in here. I don't care if it doesn't fit on the setting or the proportionality or the time. So no, 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 we gotta do it. Because the machine says we got to put one in there. You, your skin, your culture is being quantified to a fucking digit pile and added to an Excel spreadsheet. They don't put you in the video games because they want you to be there. They put you in the video games because the machine says you have to be there. You know what this reminds me of? What is it? Okay. That is disgusting. What? Okay. This actually reminds me of something from my youth. As you guys may or may not know... The three of us here in the Ravens flock, we're all Latinos. But also, we happen to enjoy the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. Almost almost to a sexual extent. Almost. Oh, Black Luster Soldier, our forbidden love will never become (laughs) true. Okay, no. Go for a while. I remember the the gaming website, Pojo.com, that in the forums on there where you discuss, like, Magic the Gathering, the Pokemon game, the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, someone in the forums, in the message forums on there, had actually written out an Excel spreadsheet on scoring your deck in terms of its uh, its viability in, uh, and, uh, and successfulness in continuous gaming. It had a lot of arbitrary ass fucking, like, check marks on there. Like, if and afterwards you would get a little percentage at the end. Like, oh, okay, it's this percent uh, after you would calculate and tabulate everything that you would add into it. This feels mm. like that! Yeah. 20 <laughs> fucking years later, what I thought was just a simple little spreadsheet for seeing, wh- hey, whether or not if my uh, children's card game is good enough, now we are applying it to our freaking movies and our video games. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're doubling there down we on that formula. I can't believe it. They actually pushed it. And they genuinely thought people were going to look at this and go, bro, that's kind of fucking racist. Angel? Like, this is disgusting. God damn it. Ha! You missed. Which is funny, because my next piece of news is actually about Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, joy. What? You know what? Yeah. Go for it. We you weren't expecting that, were you? So, I need to step this is good. Co- yeah, go right ahead, Juan. We got a couple this is left, co- Angel. Go ahead. Yeah, this is, this is the reason why I picked it, because I figured this whole thing with Blizzard was going to, p- to be a problem. So... I'm going to use the last few minutes to talk a little bit about the most recent rules about Yu-Gi-Oh. Get this shit. You're going to be both surprised and disappointed that you didn't know. Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments are going to start penalizing you if you smell bad. What? That's right. Konami, according to the boys at IGN, is finally cracking down on bad hygiene Yu-Gi-Oh TCG tournaments. With the implementation of the new rule that states that if your clothing is dirty or it smells bad, you're getting your ass kicked out of the tournament right away. The new rule was posted in the official Yu-Gi-Oh! Blow as part of a wider tournament policy update and can be found under the subsection labeled Hygiene. It reads, this is a new section requiring all persons attending the tournament to be clean and wear clean clothing. If you or your clothing is considered excessively dirty or bad smelling, you will be penalized. Okay, okay forget the last news piece. This is peak stupid. No, no, no. This is actually brilliant. You know why? Do you know why this is actually fucking brilliant? Why? Be- because, because 
Dear viewers, friends to the Raven's flock, nerds around the world who are united behind us all, if any of you have gone to a video, uh, have gone to an anime convention, and you Oof. smell the stink of Con Funk, yes. the most yeah. dastardly of villainous foes that any nerd could ever hope to stand against, imagine that smell all day fucking long at a card shop. At a fucking Ooh. card shop. Oh. I don't you have know. to imagine it. I lived it. And I'll tell you right now, every single one of those stinky ass 14-year-old motherfuckers who don't know how to use a freaking stick of degree or axe body spray, <laughs> every single one of them needs to be stripped of their decks, stripped of their memberships, and ejected from the venue with extreme prejudice. Dude, forget you know it. It weren't for our hands being bound by the fetters of untenable fetters of the law, I would reach back to a firmer, more ancient <laughs> form of justice and have them all burned at the stake. Thank if it you. wasn't for the laws of this land, I would have slaughtered you since okay. one. <laughs> First of all, thank you for the Ghostbusters 2 line. You're That's welcome. Awesome. Number one. Number two, yeah, at this point, we might as well get ourselves like a bunch of like apple launchers or rather potato guns and load soap bars into it and just shoot it at them. Yeah, no, blast away. Motherfuckers have been getting away with this for too long. And let's not forget, these rules exist for a reason. Do you guys remember what was the reason why you can only have a 40 to 60 card deck? I remember. I remember yes. that right away. <sighs> it's not an urban legend. This is a real it story. It happened. Someone had actually showed up with his two friends to a Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game tournament with a 2,000 card deck. Jesus! The deck box was vertical. was horizontal. And it was ridiculously long. He had to have his buddy carry it and support it in the middle and in the back. There was no way to actually defeat him because by the time he was done shuffling at the beginning, you've already lost your patience. By the way, it gets better. The oh majority God, of the deck, it. the majority of that deck was composed of cards with reshuffling effects. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I the totally first turn lasted 20 minutes. That was evil. Oh, but it's better. To prove a the point. deck's na the name of the deck is a German word that translates to "look again." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, that's the kind of evil I could get behind. That that that's the same. Uh, what is it called? Uh, like chaotic good. Oh, they're like, I'm fo no, it, it's, it's like I'm following the letter of the law. There is no rule here that says I cannot have a deck that big. And I'm over here yeah. saying... Le uh, Legend There's a lot of comments here from TARDIS. Traveling TARDIS here. They were talking about the racial issue thing. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll, I'll read it off. Being Asian, when it comes to a race that is always curbed by Hollywood, sports, and politics, Asians are literally in the outfield. For fuck's sake, they are giving James Wong a star. They are giving James Wong a star on the Walk of Fame. James is yep. 93 years old. As the statement says for Hollywood, welcome to the party, pal. Having said, <laughs> having say that, having said that, if anyone addresses me as an Asian doctor who podcaster, I will drop a cinder block on a testicle. I like to judge <laughs> I like to judge people by talent, skill, and character, which isn't judged by skin pigmentation. Thank you for that. I don't want to be exactly. judged by my crunchy shell exterior. I want to be you judged deserve by better. my creamy inner filling. I like that. And then Will Morris commented, he deserves a star, um, basically replying to the TARDIS as being part of the X-Files. No, no, that, he, that right, James he's a pivotal Wong. Part, was... Yeah, James, par, uh, James Wong is a pivotal part of the X-Files. He's a director of Final Destination and The One. That's right. James Wong directed oh, The shit, One. Oh, shit. For Jim real? Jason Statham. Oh, yeah, that no, is no, so the, cool. No, no, that I love that movie. movie. That movie was called War. War. The I one know. was with uh, Jason. Jet Li fighting Jet Li. There was also young yeah. Jason Statham with hair. That, oh, yeah, that's true. That was one of the first times we saw Jason Statham actually on the theaters. But, yeah, no, he makes a good point. You should be, like, judged properly on your talents. Oh, I mean, oh yeah, no, we're talking about the, the, the actor James Wong, not James Wan from, like, the director. Sorry. Whoops. Yeah, the director. But Same point thing. in case, the point still stands. Like, <laughs> imagine... God, can you imagine if somebody went to get the Oscars and they got an Oscar not because of their hard work or their acting, but because they were the right color? How the meaning would that feel? 
isn't that uh, wasn't that a joke that they were trying to make in Tropic Thunder? Yes, that was a jo- yeah. But I digress. Good. Going back to the poker point is Yu Gi Oh has rules for a reason, and this time the rule is basically the funk is getting too stonk. So let's the plague brother Stromby starts tuning and summoning synchros all over the place. We're gonna put that shit down, which means I don't know how they're going to enforce this rule. But whenever you go to your next Yugo tournament, you best shower and wash that ass. Because if the funk too stonk, you're getting your ass into the shadow realm. Pretty much. I mean, come on, man. The main characters of Yu-Gi-Oh! don't fucking stink up the place. Yeah, but we You know who showers? Shower either. Kaiba. Yeah, that's true. Are, are you gonna let Kaiba show you up? <laughs> exactly. And that is the end of the game news for now. Right. That, we pretty much reached the end of the program. Just a couple of announcements. Um, just Bef- to... Before we get into the announcements, let me pick up on the on the chat over here. Let yeah, me go see. ahead. It looks um, like it's not going to end, but go on. Oh, no, but still, like, oh, you met the actor. Yeah, uh, let me see here. Uh, let's see. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Yeah, they actually charge you $50,000 for that star, says Will Morris. You don't get it without paying that fifty k first. Damn. Yeah, and yeah, and uh, Legend of the Traveling Tart is saying James Wong should have had that star four decades ago. At this rate, Jet Li will get his star when he's 102 years old. Oh, goodness gracious, man. Damn. We hope, I sincerely hope not. Same. But now getting into the announcements. Um, Yes, on uh, next Saturday on May 21st, there will not, we will once again not be hosting Los Amigos Play because we will be busy being at this awesome convention called Megacon Orlando. Which Perhaps will you've be- heard of it. Megacon Orlando. It's a small little thing. Okay, let me go into details. Megacon Jesus. Orlando is one of the largest uh, conventions here in the state of Florida. Um, it, it is a four-day con weekend. It'll be hosted on May 19th till May 22nd at the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida, for any of our Florida viewers watching. So, And we will be there on Saturday, and we will be live streaming from this channel um, our, uh, I guess us just being at the con and just enjoying the con because there's so much to see at conventions. We're going to be there all day Saturday. Um, we like, of course, uh, any of you guys want to jump over, uh, whenever we're on, it's going to be nuts. Uh, what do you call it? They call it a sponsorship. Oh, for the, oh, for the uh, thing, for the Hollywood Walk okay, of Fame. Yeah. No, as in that $50,000 that you have to pay, they call it a sponsorship fee. Oh, like, okay. bullshit. Right. <laughs> and yeah, Hollywood does suck. But we will return with Los Amigos Play on the following Saturday on May 28th. Which is, and you're probably wondering, folks, why the heck are we bringing up the fact that we're not doing Los Amigos Play next Saturday? And more to the point, why the hell didn't you bring, uh, do Los Amigos Play this Saturday, today? Because we're saving all of our super awesome of video gaming chops for tomorrow, which is the Subathon from, from hell. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. After all this time, after all this waiting, we will finally unleash the awesome power of Mario Party Superstars. It is time to once more destroy our friendships, pursue money, and engage into the cruel Cadius Folios of Capitalism. Yes! As Angel so eloquently put it. As he became possessed by a robotic cyber demon. It will be tomorrow at 1 p.m. right here on this channel exclusively on YouTube.com slash The Raven's Flock. If you guys see the link here on the live chat, we appreciate that. We want you to go ahead and share that link with all your friends. If you're not subscribed to The Raven's Flock already, what's wrong with you? Go ahead and subscribe. We and Thanks ha- to everyone who was in the Popcorn Planet family who helped Thank boost you. us Thank up. Thank you. The original purpose of the Subathon from Hell was to celebrate us reaching six. 666 subscribers but, but thanks to all of you thanks to the folks at popcorn planet thanks to those who are watching because of all of you we have doubled that number and that is why we are hosting the subathon but since it is a subathon can we can we go a little higher than 1.2k can we go 1.5 can we perhaps hit 2k subscribers tomorrow yeah, seriously, guys, we'll we're, you're, you're more than invited to show up. Bring your friends. Bring, bring your pets. Give your pets uh, 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 fake identities on Google. Have uh, have Google mistake them for a Soviet spy that they thought that it was lost back in the 1980s in, over in Kiev. Have the uh, have the KGB knock down your door and have them arrest your dog. Have them fight for you uh, uh, for your dog. You defend your dog and run away to the uh, uh, to the uh, distant lake uh, retreat, and then you're face down, staring down a barrel where Harrison Ford is chasing you down, and you know that he's just too old for this, but at the same time, you can't help but respect his grit, but you know that your dog is innocent, so you fight Harrison Ford to the last breath, all in order to defend your dog, in order to have your dog have a Google account so they can subscribe to the Raven's Flock on the Summathon from Hell! Okay, number one, I'm 
shocked and amazed that you have with uh, you've uh, held yourself back for making another metal gear Good joke number two man. number two what the fuck movies have you been watching I really the like good action. ones. I really like action suspense dramas, you know, like The Fugitive, Mercury Rising. All oh, right, the uh, last is good John Wick 4. Yeah, John Wick 4, that yep. will be pretty cool. Uh, if we can tell me how you got some more subscribers, let me know. It was literally thanks to the generosity of the folks at Popcorn Planet. We just came, uh, we uh, we're uh, we're doing a uh, like just side C commentary on the the ju uh, the Justice for Johnny Depp movement along with the trial that he's got going on with Amber Heard and um, we, 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 I literally just went in to say hi to them and just give our take because we were covering it as well. And everyone from Popcorn Planet, all you guys, Will Morris, Mike, Mike, every one of you guys, and the folks from Nerd Report and Steph the Alternate, every single one of you, thank you so much again. But y'all just flooded us with subscribers and it was freaking insane. And we lost our collective shit. And it was so beautiful. Have, Have you, you ever seen, seen Harrison, Harrison fly, fly a, plane? a plane? You mean outside of movies? Yes. Uh, fly a plane? Yeah, I, I saw that scene. It was at the uh, beginning of Star Wars Episode Three. They crashed in, they hit a control tower, but then you and McGregor gave us another happy landing. Ah, uh, all right. Well, anyways, that pretty much uh, sums everything up. We appreciate all of you watching and engaging on the chat, and uh, and Eagle we will. Fan. Yeah. Yes, Thank indeed. You. And we hope to see all of you guys tomorrow for the subathon and for next week's stream when we go to MegaCon Orlando. But until then, Wancho, plug us away. Don't mind if I do. <clears throat> Thank you very much for watching this week's live stream edition of The Raven's Flock, hosted by Jose Casabona, Angel Mendez, and yours truly, Juan Arouse, as we give you the news in pop culture, geek culture, nerd culture, the convention community in Florida and abroad, and we share your, uh, and we share the, uh, the, your voice to everyone around the world as we strive, as ever since we have been since 2013, to make your voice our mission remember to hit the subscribe button and notification bell remember to tune in live every saturday evening at 7 30 p.m eastern time as we simulcast on youtube and twitch and of course engage with us on the live chat engage with us afterwards keep watching our programs you got us to over, uh, over a thousand subscribers but get us past four thousand watch hours so that we can get to the next level and share with you the next phase of the raven's flock's growth as we make your voice on our mission until next time or rather should we say until tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time when you join us as uh, as members of the subathon from hell continue to follow us on facebook.com slash the Ravens flock twitter.com slash Ravens flock 13 instagram.com slash the Ravens flock online twitch.tv slash the Ravens flock online and of course remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell right here on our flagship platform youtube.com slash the Ravens flock humble home of the black files los amigos play wrestle rewind and the Ravens flock all right folks thank you very much for tuning in on another exciting edition of our uh, live stream show of our flagship show <clears throat> nerds watching all over the internet we are the Raven's Flock, and we are out. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Young Vince McMacken. <laughs>